What's going on guys? Vic DP back on the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I've added five more Tato Type X Aim Track gun games. So somebody messaged me on Instagram asking if I had a game called Aliens Extermination. Um, I had it in the past and then it, it's just kind of finicky. Um, it's all about where you put it on the hard drive and such. Originally, I didn't have it on Eugene's Arcade, but ever since I got that Instagram message, I kind of wanted to include it in Eugene's build. So basically sitting down literally for the whole day, I got a couple more aim track light guns that really came from Tato Type X, or you can find them on Techno Parrot. Um, I tried to avoid Techno Parrot at all, at all costs. So these right now are really considered Tato Type X as they do not need any emulator to run them they run on their own stuff. So we're gonna take a look real quick at the five games. I really got six of them, um, but one of them doesn't run in full screen mode and I'm busting my ass trying to figure out how to get it to full screen. I'll show you what game that is, but for now, let's check out the five main ones that I've added to the wheel. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Type X. We've got a long press button one, and uh, we're gonna start in the beginning, which the first one is Alien. I'm gonna long press on that. And the big thing right now, like I said, I, I've been always using Eugene's bar top to play with it. Um, right now I do have it, it, it's going to a different screen size, so you will see black bars on it. On Eugene's bar top on the 22 inch, there was no black bars as far as aliens. Um, big thing about aliens is that I do have like an AHK file. This game originally is from a company called Global VR. A little bit of a headache, uh, especially if you do some research on it, to exit the game. Uh, you actually had to do like control alt delete and exit. I set up a whole AHK file so you don't have to do that. So we have both aim tracks plugged in and let's do some alien. So again, using the arcade sticks, I have the coin buttons here. I could do player one start. I'm gonna start with one player first. We'll do bug hunt. And I literally have like the aim tracks like still like coiled up and everything. I had them all nicely packaged and uh, obviously we had to add more. So again, ever since that guy messaged me on Instagram, I obviously had to add it. So again, we have two player action on this. So pretty cool on the bottom left of the screen, you could see like the ammo number. Uh, so this game I could basically hold down the trigger, but if I actually run out of ammo, it goes into a handgun mode and then I have to actually use it like a handgun. So I would have to actually press the trigger. So I'm gonna just drain out my ammo just to show you that. So I'm, I'm out, now I have to actually hit the trigger. So if I hold down the trigger, nothing happens, I have to actually take the shot. So in this game, there is actually three buttons to it. So you have the trigger and you have to use the red buttons. Uh, one is like a grenade, as you can see there. And the other one is a flame shot, like a flamethrower. So pretty cool. I'm gonna press player two start just so you guys can see some player two action. And again, we have both players on the screen. If I can find my blue. That's like the one they kind of messed up on with the crosshair. The blue kind of blends in with the black. But right now we literally have dual aliens extermination going on. So again, player two now went into like handgun mode because I ran out of ammo. Now I got ammo. So again, player one is dead. I gotta insert the coin, gotta press player one start, and now we're back. So the big thing about these kind of games, especially the five games I just added, these games have to be on your C drive. It's a must, it must be on your C drive. So that's partially why it's a little bit of a headache because the C drive right now is running out of space. But in all honesty, I kind of maneuvered some things and we made it work. So there's Alien, there you guys have it. Using the arcade, I'll be able to exit out. And as you can see, exits out back into the main screen. And now we have control. The next one I'm gonna do is called Haunted Museum. So I'm gonna press the go button on that. Loading complete. The one thing I did notice about Haunted Museum is that if you do launch it, it might tell you that the test button is being pressed. Just exit out and then relaunch it. It's very simple. Big thing about Haunted Museum, there's two of them. There's Haunted Museum 1 and Haunted Museum 2. Haunted Museum 2 is called like Fright Fearland. 
Um, both games gave me an AVI file, which is a movie file error. Um, so basically there's some cutscenes that you won't see anything. You'll see it in the Fright Fear Land. So I could press player one start, same thing. We'll do one player action first and we'll bring in player two. I could press the start button to kind of skip these cutscenes. I played this game a little bit. I'm gonna do the um, mummy one. The first one is like books flying at you. It's kind of weird. <laughs> cool, I just wanna make sure that we're recording. Yeah. So it's like you have your flashlight. That's kind of like a crosshair, I guess. I, believe, I do believe your crosshair doesn't come here. No, it doesn't. You can kind of see it though. So this game is a, you have to press the trigger. There is no use of the red buttons on this. But basically our crosshair is like our flashlight. So I can press play to start. Bring that in. And now as you can see, there's two separate flashlights. That means that there's two players active. Again, using aim tracks, utilizing the mule shooter on this also. So that's like what's kind of difficult is telling which crosshair I'm missing with. Pretty cool game though. I would definitely like play this. Um, I'm not a fan of like these horror games, but then again, most shooting games are like that. And uh, it's pretty cool. Again, this is Haunted Museum 1. Keep playing too long. Keep player one along. So player one is like a pink kind of bullet, and player two is blue. So that's Quantum Museum one. I'm gonna exit out. Now we're back to the main screen. I'm gonna bring it down one, and this is Quantum Museum two. So I'm gonna just press go on that. And what's cool, as you can see, it's just, it's seamless in and out, exits, enters, exits, and enters. This one, definitely, there's no cutscene. So I'm gonna actually let like the track mode go. You might hear something, but you won't see anything. Cause again, there was an AVI file. There should be something in the background here. And again, I had to basically remove the files to avoid that error. So you're gonna see, it's just gonna basically say just free play. See? Like there should be something actually going on there, but again, how to remove it, it's just an issue. So I could press player one start. Again, I always like to start with one player first. Again, that's a cutscene. You won't be able to see it. You just press player one start again. Uh, I'll do the first one, just to be safe. So again, there should be an actual cutscene there. Like something's around, that's where the screen is black. I had a little bit of a tough time um, setting this up to the mule shooter because there's two names to this game. It's either Haunted Museum 2 or Fear Fearland, something like that, Fright Fearland. And uh, basically it took me like a, an hour just to figure out how to get the second player on with the mule shooter. So this game I can actually hold down the trigger but there is an actual ammo number on the crosshair as you can see. So you don't really wanna just hold down the trigger. I'll press player two start. And as you can see, we have blue for player two. I just shot the guy back. <laughs> and we got player one. So again, I was having a big issue as far as getting two players on it, but got that all situated and I shot the wrong guy again. So again, in the plus side is an actual bullet count. I mean, you have 800 bullets, which is a lot of bullets. <laughs> but I'm wasting bullets now. <laughs> But again, just to show you guys dual guns on this. It's definitely a pretty cool like series. I've never seen this in the arcade, but I mean, hey, more shooting games. You can't go wrong with more shooting games. Utilizing the aim tracks on this, so pretty cool stuff. Again, I'm just holding down the trigger. I don't think the red buttons do anything in this one. No, on the museum series, there's none that they, they don't really do anything with it. Just aliens have the flamethrower and the grenade. Cool, there you go. That's Haunted Museum 2. I'm gonna exit out. The next one I'm gonna show you, which I was very happy to see it work, is Silent Hill. So Silent Hill Arcade works two player action. And as you can see again, 
flawless. The only big thing about this game, I mean, you kind of need a crosshair, but that Windows loading circle is your crosshair. Um, with two players, you're gonna actually see two of them. So um, I'm gonna start with one player. It's gonna give you like this kind of like warning about like a seizure. <laughs> Epilepsy. And again, as you can see, it's not really loading. It's just, I guess that's how they did the crosshair for it. Um, there was an option to remove it, but in all honesty, you were just shooting blind. So I'm just gonna ignore player two for now. And this one, I believe, does utilize the red button to reload or you just let the ammo run out. So I'm just playing present player one start to skip. So right trigger, right red, lets me reload early. So reload, again, you can let the kind of ammo just run out. This is a good game. I like games like this where you have to basically actually physically press the trigger. I'm a fan of those type of games instead of just holding down the trigger. So that's player one. I'll bring in player two. And as you can see now, we basically have like two kind of crosshairs going on. So again, I can do one player, two player. One player, two player. And again, I was having such a hard time, even before Eugene's build, to get this game working. Um, apparently this game was only released in Japan, um, and it works, so pretty cool. So you can do like a Kimbo style, easy stuff. So there you guys have it, that is Silent Hill. Again, red button to exit, hold press, again, long press to exit on that. Now the last one I want to show you real quick, it's called Gia Attack. Um, I do know for a fact right now it's going to kind of give me a little bit of a, not an error, it's going to kick me back to the front end only because of my screen, my 32 inch, it's kind of giving me an issue. If I put it on this screen, it doesn't give me an issue. So I think it's a resolution kind of thing, which doesn't really make sense. But again, I'll show you real quick. But again, it doesn't do this on the actual bar top. See, it does that, it just kicked us out. Um, it's actually in the background, but it brought Hyperspin to the front. Again, if I take it out and put it on Eugene's bar top screen, it works. But for right now, I'm going to exit out of Hyperspin and I'll just launch the game on its own. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show you two games that I'm contemplating on keeping um, I'm not too sure. I've been playing with it. Um, I'll show you the first one, which is Gia Attack. Um, in all honesty, this game keeps giving me a read error. Um, I even tried to do what I do at Haunted Museum, where I actually removed the whole movie folder. Um, but no matter what, you're gonna get a read error out of this. Um, if you don't, if you like, let this go, kind of like into a track mode, it's just gonna give you that read error. Um, I'll let it go real quick. Uh, again, I'm not too sure if I want to keep this. It works, but then you might run into an error and then it doesn't work. And as you can see, there's the error right there. So again, still contemplating on keeping it. Um, I will keep it for now. You know, usually people comment down below and they tell me the issue I'm having. So, you know, thanks if you do help me out. Um, but for right now, we're actually gonna actually try to play one. Um, I'll let you some coins. Again, just using the keyboard for now because I'm outside of hyperspin. Uh, it is a two-player game. The big thing I also found out about this game is that the player one is like the health bar is, is visible, but player two isn't. Um, if I had player two visible, the game wouldn't even launch at all. Like it would just crash the desktop. So it's either don't play the game at all or just deal with only seeing player one. Um, I'll bring in player two. Uh, there's no crosshairs on this game. You do see like the red one, but not the blue one. But you can basically see the blue shot to it. And this game is basically you can't just hold down the trigger. You have to actually clip away. So unfortunately, even after you get past this, if you beat it or if you don't beat this part, 
you will get a movie error out of it. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually succeed. Um, I don't I never did that. I'm surprised by it, but I know for sure it's gonna give me a movie read error as you can see. So again, I'll try to fix it. If not, we're gonna wipe it out. I'm gonna exit out. So now the next game that I have an issue with, and it works, but I can't figure it out, and that is Operation Ghost. Um, basically, I am unable to get this game to go into full screen. I've tried so many different things, I can't get this game to run full screen. I could get it full screen, but then the game isn't playable. As you can see right now, the game is playable. You could actually play this game. Uh, let's see if I can add some credits. Um, I forgot this has like unique keyboard commands to insert credits and press start. So this is control F1 to insert coins. And again, I basically would set this up in hyperstream, but again, I can't get this game to launch in full screen. I've tried everything. And the, the most difficult thing is that if you click away, that you're gonna lose the game. Meaning it's gonna go behind. I try everything. Um, it does do all screen reload where you just gotta just not click away, you just take your screen off the take the mouse off the screen and it'll work. So again, I could as you can see like I'll be able to just go off the screen and it reloads. So off screen, not pressing anything, and it reloads. So it's it's a cool game. Again, I just can't get it to play full screen. There is a setting to do full screen, but if I do, the game just won't launch. It, it, it won't run. And again, I'm so upset because I, I got it to run, but I just can't get it to do full screen. I've tried everything, a DX, WMV thing. I've tried doing within um, a rocket launcher to force it screen, stretch, full screen. It, it, just, it just won't run. Um, so again, if I go off screen and click, you've lost the game. So that's like the one downside to it. I wish, I wish it would run, but like right now I have to find my mouse. <laughs> and again, it's, it's, it's a cool game. It's just, as you can see, it's, it's just not full screen. Um, I'll show you real quick. I'll launch the game in full screen just to show you the issue I'm having. So I'm gonna exit out. I have to actually change one of these things. I forgot what it was. GS2. So if I if I do full screen on this one and press save, I even tried to do like the screen resolution thing. If I launch it now, oops, wrong game. Sorry. Operation goes. If I launch this now, you're gonna see I'm gonna get full screen on this. See? I can press. But right here, that's it. You see this like you could even see it how we were playing it before. There was the insert coin thing going on. That's it. Screen goes black. I can enter my coin. I could press start. You hear it. See, our crosshair is just a nightmare. I mean, if I could, if I could see the enemies, no, I lost. It. I see my crosshair, but I don't see anything else. So unfortunately, again, I can't get this game to launch full screen. I could get it to launch medium, like regular how it is, but for some reason, full screen is just that. And as you see, I, I press escape. It didn't actually exit the game. And you can see the whole resolution and all that. Somebody did suggest that you have to put like a 1600 by 1200 kind of setup to your desktop. I mean, now you're gonna start messing around stuff. I don't want to deal with it. I'd rather just get rid of it. But at least we do have the mini kind of screen to it, I guess. Uh, but other than that, there you guys have it. A couple more gun games added.